Okay, so here we are, we've rebooted, and the domain controller should be now done. Let's log in that guy. Let's take a look at node 1 while he comes up. This is this is Active Directory Domain Services Remote Server. And let's see. This needs Active Directory. So I will add it. Next. Required, next, and install. Let's go back here. Okay, she's up. Let's take a look. We should see, under administrative tools, Active Directory users and computers. And it's installing that snap-in. And there's our domain, aplus.local. aplus.local, and there are no computers yet joined to the domain, but that is just about to change. So, if I recall correctly, the IP address of this is... One twenty nine. Yes, it is. Alternate DNS is going to be one ninety two, one sixty eight, fifty nine dot two. Say OK. Now, this one is static, so let's join it to the domain. Let's go to Properties. We'll take it out of a work group and change it to the domain aplus.local. An Active Directory domain controller could not be contacted. Well, usually that's because of the IP address that we have in there, or don't have. So if we look at the adapter settings, P version 4, properties, we know that the DNS server is actually 129. And the alternate DNS is going to be 192.168.59.2. So now let's try it. Okay. There you go. You get a login immediately. And we will log in as administrator. And our password. And it should welcome us to the domain in about two seconds. One, two. Welcome to the A plus local domain. You must restart to apply these changes. Yes. Do you want to? Yes. We will restart now. Let's go here. Okay, now Active Directory is installed here. Let's check and make sure that this is set up with the proper IPs. Adapter settings. IP version 4. Everything is dynamic, so let's do IP config. IP config all. Look at the adapter information. 
131. So our IPs are 129, 130, and 131. 192.168.59.131 And this one is going to be 192.168.59.129 and 192.168.59.2 so we can get to the internet okay well we can get to the internet it's just you need that DNS server to resolve uh, internet names correctly close now we're going to try something different um, we're going to use PowerShell to join the domain and it is real, real simple. All PowerShell. PowerShell bears an outward resemblance to the old command prompt, but this is an object-oriented version. It's a super-powered command prompt, for want of a better way to describe it. And the simple way that you add a computer to a domain is you add computer to the domain a plus dot local hit enter and it should say warning the changes will take effect after you restart the computer in node 2 excellent exit okay so let's reboot it just did the exact same thing that we did through the GUI when um, we uh, right clicked on computer went to properties and advanced properties and changed the uh, work group to a domain. That is exactly what we just did. So let's restart. Okay, now node 1 is ready to log on and there will be just one thing that you've got to change. This is what's known as a local logon, node 1 meaning you will log on just to the machine but you want to log on to the domain so you must switch the user and what we do is we type in the domain a plus dot local slash administrator and the password and looks like it's logging on just fine and if we go to the domain controller now and refresh the Active Directory we will find that we find our nodes both 1 and 2 have been joined to the directory node 2 is now ready to join actively and we've got to do the same thing this is the local logon, like if you had um, to log on to just the machine. Let me put in the domain and the user, in this case. Administrator, did I spell that right? Administrator, yes. and. and good. Control Alt to get my mouse control back and I'll be right back with you. Okay so let's summarize what we've got here. We've got a domain controller and two member servers logging into that domain. As you can see here in uh, Active Directory we've got node 1 and node 2 we're logging in as administrators so that we have full capability on the domain and to set up a SQL failover cluster you do have to have at least domain administrator privileges um, we joined a domain using PowerShell and I demonstrated a couple of errors when uh, you did not set a static IP when you tried to go DC promo you saw the error with that and uh, when I tried to join node 2 you saw the error with that. I think the only other thing I'm going to do is demonstrate something a little bit more about VMware right now really quickly. 
Um, there's something in SQL, uh, failover clusters, known as a heartbeat, and you have to have a separate set of network cards for that. I'm going to look very quickly at the virtual network editor because I did set up a custom network, network 9. It's a 10.1.1 subnet. And what I'm going to do is show you how to add a second network card to the nodes. On node 1, you click on the tab, go to settings, and select add, go to network adapter, click next, and I'm going to go custom because I'm going to join it to network 9, finish, and click OK. Now what this will do is it will stop the uh, node and restart it. It's not the same thing as rebooting. It won't come up with an error. I'm going to do the same thing to node 2. Go to Add, go to <coughs> Network Adapter, Next, and put that also on Network 9, Finish, and you will see this machine stop and restart also. Now, something that we should be able to do is ping, that's the machine node 2 starting over. What I'm going to do is open a command prompt, and here's another network testing command that we use, ping. And I'm going to ping the domain controller, which is 192.168.59.1. And as you see, there's a reply. What I'm going to do is uh, ping a fictitious uh, number, ping 1212, uh, and I'm just going to show you it times out. And it takes a little while for it to respond every time. And you hit Control C to break out of a DOS prompt like that, a command that's hanging or taking its time. What I should be able to do is set the second network adapter to a static IP also. I'm going to open the network center, go to adapter settings, and as you see there's local area connection 2 and the original one. You can see that this is on A plus local. Now there's, there's a command that is not showing here to see the advanced network connections you need to press Alt N and go to advanced settings. Now in this sometimes when you're setting up a cluster you have to change the order that certain protocols bind in or the order that certain network cards bind in. Now it shows local area connection 2 first. You want to lower that and make the <coughs> other connection, local area connection 1, A plus local, the first one. And I'm actually going to rename this. Uh, I'm going to rename it public because that's the public network. This one is going to be on the private network. And we will use that for the heartbeat in SQL. If we set up a heartbeat, it will be on this one. Properties. It is going to be dynamic, but we need to set it static. So, what I want to do is just give it, just want to give this an appropriate IP address for the subnet that it's on. 128. Don't worry, um, you'll learn how to do subnetting in a, a future unit with me. Maybe not here in A+, but and while it was paused, I did the same thing for node 2. Set it up as 10.1.1.129. All right, and I think we are now ready to uh, validate this hardware to be a cluster.